Listen to me. You're doing two major things wrong here. You're not failing right. You're not doing intelligent failing. Okay? And number two, you're using a brush that can lead you to years of stagnation, non-progression. We had a drawing challenge recently. I'm gonna go into that and I'm gonna show you a little bit what you're doing wrong. This is coming from an industry professional, all right? Let's get you learned. Let's get you learned and get you turned. All right, come on, let's go. What does this all revolve around? Getting better faster and then noticing your mistakes, all right? That's what it's all about. I'm just gonna go over intelligent failing first. Let's just do that. What better way Way to help stupid people understand something than a graph. Take a look at this graph. I'm gonna try to keep this nice and simple so you can understand it. If you look down here, you see wrong decisions. Let's just say our wrong decisions are A through K. And then at the very end of it, you got your goal. Okay, pretty simple so far. All right, you with me? And so intelligent failing is all about being okay with failing and realizing that you need to fail in order to move on to the next thing. And I've said this before, but what do I mean by it? You got your one right here. This is a piece of art. This is an art piece that you're creating. And always, like I say, you know, I say this, uh, always I say reference professional art. So this is coupled with your art piece. You know this. Okay, I'm not gonna dive into it. You already know this. A, B, C are the mistakes that you've made on this first piece. Let's say it's a, a character design that that you're working on. Let's say you spent 30 minutes on this guy. Now, here's the thing about intelligent failing. Move on. You do the drawing and then you move on after that. This is super important because I see uh, students doing this all day. Okay, they take their crayon, they just keep on. After you're done with the first one, move on to painting two or character design two. If you're smart, you can already see a trend here. A, B, and C are the mistakes that you've made on the first drawing, but by this point, you know not to make the same mistakes. That's how we work, right? You touch something hot and you say, ow, that hurt. Don't touch that hot thing again. Uh, and if you're smart, that's why it's called intelligent failing. You, this, it requires thinking, it requires realization that you've made the stupid mistake. And this is why a lot of people don't get this because you know they just keep on drawing the same thing, keep on making the same mistakes. And I can tell just by looking at you, you're pretty smart. By step three, all right, you've made the mistakes D, E, F, and G this time. All right, by step three, you've known that you've made the mistakes from the second art piece and the first art piece. And by this point, you're eliminating the wrong decisions. That's all that this is. Process of elimination, intelligent failing. Let's say you spent 30 minutes on drawing two, 30 minutes on drawing three. All right, we're moving. We're not staying on one thing. That's the, 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 in order for this whole thing to work out, you have to keep moving. Otherwise, you're making the same mistakes on the same thing over and over and over again, okay? You're not moving through time and space. And then you find yourself at step four, you've made all the mistakes and you've learned everything what not to do and what works, what doesn't work. And you've hit your goal. It doesn't have to be one through four drawings, one through four paintings. I personally did like seven at a time. In one day, I would have maybe like seven projects that I can uh, flip back and forth. And so if you spend a little bit of time on one, move on to the next one, move on to the next one. Check this out. By the time you've hit the final piece, you go all the way back to the first one. Now you're smarter because you've learned through this process. You've taken everything that you've learned and now you go back to the first one and, and it's so clear when you go back to the first one, you're like, oh my God, I was so stupid. And you know what? You're right, you really were. And again, this would not work without these references. Make sure you've got your references on each piece. And I'll talk about references in the previous video, so you check that out. Boom, hey, boom. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna jump straight into this brush thing. Again, this is all about getting better, faster, to cover it as a whole. It's all about indecision. Whenever you use a, a brush with low opacity like that, like you see on the thumbnail, or you see here in the work that I'm uh, kind of breaking down, it's all about indecision. A student needs clarity within their own work. And whenever you use a brush with low opacity, you're not forcing yourself to make a decision. If you go watch my other video about this triangle situation, it's the same thing. Don't you ever draw with an oval and uh, it's because ovals lead to indecision and these triangles they have a favored side so you know which way the shape is turning so if you guys can just take a second and shut up I can show you some examples. Here's some of my old work here. This was like 2014, 15 or 16 or something. But these studies, you can tell I'm not at maximum learning potential here. If you can look into these, you can tell that it's all this way or that way. Big no, 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 don't you ever do that. You need to be clear in your mistakes so you can realize them, work on them. Maybe your first step is to be all loosey goosey. Then you can lower the opacity and come back over and make a decisive line. Check out this fella. I, the opacity's down on my brush when I was doing this. 
but you can still see a form. I'm just going to try to come in and make that more clear. This is the shoulder and he's a standard round brush. Look, it's all pixely. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, baby. Where is it turning? This is about a year or so afterwards. You can tell that I am clarifying, simplifying, making sure it's clear where the line starts and ends, what shapes they're making. There's no guessing here. You look at it, you know which way these characters are turning. All right, but pay attention, pay attention. There's always a flip side to these things. There are always good artists that can kind of counter what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at Corey Loftus. Corey Loftus, hands down, OG. This guy's like best of the best. Okay, it might look like cartoons to you, like little cartoon characters, little Disney things. The more you dive into it, you can see the confidence and the shape language that this guy's creating. It can be applied to anything. It can be, be, be applied to your art, to anybody's art. Okay, but then you look at his stuff and you can see that he's using opacity. He's, he's specifically doing what I said not to do. For one, he's a professional in the industry and he knows what he's doing, but I'm not going to let that be an excuse to not explain why it's okay that he's doing this. He understands the overall shapes that he's using. It does not matter what kind of brush you use as long as you got the knowledge of what you're trying to create the line quality doesn't really matter. The brush does not matter. If there was a brush that I had to recommend to study clarity, to force yourself to make decisions, is the standard round brush. All right, no opacity. We're gonna be getting to your drawing challenge in a second, but this stuff that I'm talking about right now, it's gonna be applied to that. Seeing this type of work changed my life. What he's doing is taking 3D art. Okay, they have a very rough 3D animation that they do for these films. And what Corey does is he goes in and he changes the shapes of the 3D models so that 3D modelers can put them, you know, to make them more full of life. And you see that happening here and it's super impressive. Changed my life. Look at this, look at this stuff. The changes that he's making are incredible. He's being decisive with his lines. So maybe what you could do to kind of study this more is go in with the hard round brush, specifically try to find these lines that he's trying to create. Super important to go in and study why they do the decisions, why they make the decisions that they make. All right, here's an example. Look at this arm. Do you see the taper that this arm is creating? It's not like this, okay? These lines aren't parallel. There's a taper. There's a favored side to this whole overall shape. When you start going in and breaking these things down with your little infant eyes, you will be able to see if you can think. Again, it all comes back down to whether you're putting these two and two together. They're not just doing this stuff willy-nilly. There's a there's a purpose for everything. His leg here. Look at that beautiful shape. How it comes down like this confident boom and then it hits this point with the knee. That's the knee. That's why it's stopping there. Put two and two together. Quit being so stupid. And do you see this? Oh, it's really hard to see. Maybe you can see it if you're a little bit smarter than you are. He tried to erase it. Corey tried to erase it so you wouldn't see it. But we see it, don't we? This shape of the bottom of the leg swoops back in. It's an overall shape, baby. All right, let's take it from the top. I'm just gonna show you because this is important. Boom, you got this boom, hard line. And then boom, you got this hard line where the knee cuts off. Boom, boom, boom. And now what does it do? It swoops back in to be the, the shin area of this uh, tiger lion thing. And you know what he does? Bing, bang, boom, he erases it. Done. I learned so much from looking at Corey's work. It's just incredible. You don't, again, you don't have to draw like this guy, but there's a lot to learn from him. Again, right here, he's varying the opacity of this brush doesn't matter. He is proof that you can be decisive with this type of line work, but it comes down to being a student and learning and being clear with your own, with being clear with yourself. All right, that's the whole point of all this, just to be clear with yourself. Gosh, some amazing stuff. And you know what? I met Corey once. It turns out we actually grew up very close to each other. We didn't actually physically grow up next to each other. We grew up in towns that were close to each other. All right, I can see it in his drawings. He's got a, he's got some really good taste. You know how else I can tell he's got some good taste? Ethan Cole off this. You know what my middle name is? That's right, baby. My name's Ethan Cole Becker. Look at that. That's crazy, huh? Fight him for the title, you know? Uh, uh, let's take a little bit of what we just got learnt. And we're going to be applying it to your drawing challenges. Already off the bat, your line art is already pretty solid. All right, so there's not so much that I can break down here. More like point out kind of like what you're doing right. Okay, for this challenge, it might've been a thing where I was telling you to wear a jacket or something. You don't have to be naked necessarily, but take reference with like a tight shirt or, you know, a short sleeve. And then if you want to take reference with the jacket over it, you know, you can do that too. But this jacket is giving us some hints here of, of which way the arm is turned. And now we need to make sure we get that down in the, uh, the drawing here, which you are doing here at the sleeve. 
Again, it's our job to be clear in our designs of which way the body's turning. So just having a straight line like this, even though a jacket might do that in real life, things can happen in real life. I can like put my leg behind my head and roll around on the floor. It doesn't mean it's a good, uh, a good design. So it's our job to make it clear which way this arm is going. You're gonna see it too here at the top of the jacket. The way this jacket is made, manufactured, uh, it can also follow the, the line of which your body is turned. So right here, you got a patch or something. Uh, naturally yeah you think it's gonna go down this way or if it's a print on a jacket or something like that in reality the perspective that you've got going here is you're looking up at this character the shoulder is gonna be doing this hunky-dory thing where it's coming over so the top of this patch or something like that just to be clear we got to make sure that it's following the perspective of the arm all right don't you ever do that again Again, the easy way to figure this stuff out is to uh, take a good reference shot of yourself. Clear reference. Anytime you have a question about, you know, which way the perspective is, this or that, you go back to your, uh, your, your reference and it'll, it'll tell you everything you need to know, baby. There's no guessing in this game. Now, Ghost has some really cool stuff up here. Ghost got a really nice squat going on. Very, very clear. Ghost is very clear in the overlap. All right, dude, take a look at that. This overlap. Very, very important. Which way is the toe facing? Which way is the whatnot? As for line quality, Ghost is killing it. All right, very clear line. We know which ways is what shoulders and hips. That's all you got to get right, baby This shoulders raised but in your reference shot. It's kind of down a little bit. So let's connect that we always check which way the collarbones go in here shoulders is a really big part because the, the nuance of your emotion is in your shoulders okay you got me like this now if i bring them up a little bit makes me look maybe a little bit more nervous all right bring them way down now I'll look more relaxed or you know lazy or something so whenever you're doing hips whenever you're doing shoulders the nuances of the slight raise or whatnot it's very important to pay attention to those moving on there's not a lot wrong with all of these i just kind of wanted to show them this one is the only thing i can say is you know just make sure you follow these perspective grids of the clothes that you're wearing again line quality you're being very solid with your lines which is cool because it's forcing you to make those decisions but let's take a look at these uh these thighs right here now we can see the difference and why the volume doesn't feel as full because it just starts and ends right here all right that shape is a lot more flat than this rounded it's because you're thinking of this image as a two, uh, as a one dimension uh, flat illustration. What I want you to do in the future is think about how these things wrap around and start drawing more confidently in a uh, volumetric form. Think about the mass of the thigh. And uh, those are really helpful if you look back at your reference. Maybe get a tattoo on your leg or something so you can see the volume of which your thigh takes up. Moving on. Right here, Fish is killing it again. Line quality is good. We can see the clear yada 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 looking really good. Fish got Fish's own style. That's for sure. Fish is doing everything right. The only thing I would say is whenever you're taking your reference shots make sure you act these things out as if it's really happening to you and it's hard because sometimes we don't go through actual martial art training but really put yourself in that kick study how people do kicks and then think about getting hit in the side study how people get hit in the side you know there's going to be a pinch and a curve to the body when it gets hit or an animation you really want to study animation because they know how to push those things boom you get hit in the side you're going to be pinching there everything's going to be going to that point and the other side is gonna be a uh, more of a curve, you know? And if you study action scenes where people are kicking, or if you study MMA or whatever, you can see when somebody's throwing a kick, there's gonna be a specific energy to that motion. It's good to study those things. The, the stuff that you're referencing needs to be authentic. Looking good though. All these things are pretty nitpicky. It's because people weren't focusing probably on the uh, the poses, they're focusing on the lighting, which is what I told them to do. In the challenge, you're, you're supposed to put yourself in specific lighting scenarios and try to uh, shade the right way. Go uh, check out the Poco video, and that's where I talk about the shading. And that's what a lot of these people are doing which this person did really well. I love the clarity in the line, the lighting. That's just looking really dope. Moving on. This guy did it really good too. Awesome stuff. It looks like a uh, it looks like a Nike ad straight up. The pose is really good. Natural, nice natural like shoulders falling. This jacket, these hands, the whole pose is super iconic. This person's acting is down. The pose is down. Everything looks really cool. And the execution of it is awesome. This line quality, very decisive in the lines. Also used this very strong lighting coming up from the bottom. And he simplified the uh, the lighting in the final. Really good looking stuff. Boom, moving on. Again, really good job with the lighting. Nothing really to say on this one. You know, you got the, you've got your style down. You've got your line quality down. It's cool stuff. And look, you even got some uh, reference down here. You reference how Ghibli does their, their shading and stuff. All right, this person's doing something that I really want to make a video about and that's 3D and how you can use 3D as reference. Very useful and you executed it pretty well. I like the line quality. Everything's looking good on this one. Let's move on. Okay, this is something you can do too. Going through films, picking out po- <laughs> I thought it broke for a second. <laughs> I was about to be very disappointed if my cigarette broke. 
uh, going through films and going through screenshots, trying to find poses that work, trying to find lighting situations that work, backgrounds that work, things that you like. Why is this so important? Because everything in television, everything in a TV show, everything in film, all the shots are not by accident. Every single shot, composition, lighting, the nuances of where they're standing and whom is where and where is whom. Every single shot is manufactured and they make sure that everything's working perfectly. Every single frame is a painting and they're really good to go and study from. This is a really good shot. Maybe not to study lighting so much because it's a very clear shot, but if you go to more dramatic shots or something, something with like a very hard key light then you can start to see those defined shadows all right good stuff though moving on here's almost an example of the line quality that i'm talking about again you can blame this on style you can say it's my style to do this yada 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 but it's our job to make it more clear to clean up this line when you're learning but that's not to say this person doesn't have clarity look at the uh the clarity in the hand here i know which way these fingers are turning there is some clarity in this again you can go back to doing this if you want to to learn faster you have to realize your mistakes that's what drawn with the hard round brush really does for you realize your mistakes in clarity all right again this is a lighting challenge i realize that all right so good job with the lighting as well as this person very hard light right here clear line clear shadow good stuff uh, you could have upped the brightness a little bit in the shadow so we could see a little bit of the details in there one small note the lighting is there to describe the form mood that's all good you know it's fine but describing the form is lighting 101 this right here under the chin we want to make sure that describes the form of the the neck the lighting could happen that way, where the light comes, you know, through the bottom of the neck or whatever. But if you if you zoom out and you blur your vision, it looks like he has a bump on his neck. And it's uh, our job to be clear in the lighting. This is a surface, this is a surface. There's a differentiation of those. All right, good stuff. I just wanted to show this person's, oh, this is getting really nasty. All right, again, I know I may have said to use a jacket, but if you're trying to take reference in a black jacket and black shorts, you're not gonna see a clear definition of design. So, uh, so get naked. Good stuff though, other than that. This person's kind of doing what I'm talking about here. I can tell they went in and kind of did the scribbly mess where they're just trying to figure out what's what, you know? And that's cool, because right over here you came in and cleaned it up. But we want to be a little bit more decisive in this. So you can come up, come in after this and do very specific cleanup. We know there's a bump here and we know it comes back in here. So let's just... All right, we're coming in and being more decisive with our lines. If you break down shapes, you'll see that the wrist kind of pops out like this. It does a little pop and it does a little drop right there. So we want our shadow to help define that. The shadow right here could be following and describing this form because you don't need line. You don't always need line to describe the form. You want to use shadow to do that. For the most part, this line is pretty clear. You've got the overlap of this foot. You're kind of doing it on the wrist right here. You're showing the overlap. Okay, very clear. In the end, you were going for clarity. I think you did a pretty darn good job of it. All right, let's move on. Here's another one looking pretty good with the uh, the lighting situation here. Really good reference, hard, strong key light coming in here. Good, uh, good job on this one. Okay, I really liked this one. It's very clear, there's a style in it, and you really went in here. I like the clarity in this, this area. Uh, nothing much to say. You're very, very clear with this. The lighting isn't the strongest because it's more of like a bloom light that you have, you know? It's not, it's not such a hard light that you can see every clear cut. But as for line decisiveness, you got it going. You got it going on. All right, this one's really cool. He's got a style going on. Everything's looking good. Again, it's not the best for lighting because it's just a more of like an overall atmospheric lighting. It's really good for posing, especially if you want to find out about cloth and how it turns. So I know this guy's wearing a little bit more of a tight suit, but we can still learn from this coming in here and breaking down how this cloth is working. All right, it's bunching up right here. The most important things that I look for in this is this shape right here. That right there is an overlap in itself. And I can simplify it by coming in here and doing something like this. We see that it kind of pops pops out right there. Kind of does something like that. Right there, there's another one. Look at it, that overlap, that's what we want. And I see right here, it can get all wavy and whoa, look at all the waves. No, we just keep it simple. We just come in here and cut in. Even this bump right here, we don't have to, to do that. We could do it, but we're not gonna. All right, good stuff, moving on. This guy, his line quality is a little bit thicker. So if you got thick line quality, it can kind of trick you up. And I used to do this all the time. I used to make my brush really big, but really what I'm doing is hiding all the mistakes that I am making. I'm hiding the mistakes from my own self. Don't you ever do that. 
It's really important to realize your mistakes, so maybe pick a, a line quality that's a little bit thinner for learning. All right, if you want to go back in and make your line quality all pretty or whatnot and do do your own style, you can do that over it. Keep your style. Don't don't blame your mistakes on your style. We're just going to look at this hand. Right here's a good example. Right here, when I break this down with a thinner brush, I see that there's a point here where it comes back in. We're just going to try to focus on that. But right here, it's very easy to just kind of block out that whole section in one stroke. There are artists that do that. There are artists that have the thick to thin type of curve thing, but they understand the structure that's underneath. They understand the turning point and where they need to emphasize. You come in there with a smaller brush to figure out where your turning point is and where you need to emphasize, and then you got it. All right, moving on, boom, good looking stuff. I really like the creativity of this, uh, the, the lighting reference that this dude's using. He's actually got a light up and it's like blooming out and making these shapes on his face. He didn't necessarily use the shapes or anything in his reference, but he took the, uh, the idea of the concept of this. Even then, I think you nailed it. You weren't necessarily studying the reference that you had as much. You still did good work. Nice clear line. All right, I like this. That guy's a winner. 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 Okay, this is a very interesting thing. This person took out the line art of the, uh, the, the, the hands or the skin. Anywhere the skin does its dinkle, uh, the person took out the line art. That's also an option. But if you're doing that, make sure that you have done the line art in the first place and you're making those shapes very clear to yourself. All right, on the jacket, on the clothes, anywhere else, you can do the line art. Uh, looking good. This, this, this guy's the winner for best pose shot. Went through the effort of putting the camera up high. Uh, I like the shot. You got like a good line down here. Looking good, I like the shot. You didn't really follow the lighting, but whatever. You know, you got a little bit of lighting on the tip of the nose and the, uh, the th th forehead. Regardless, good stuff, good stuff. Moving on. All right, if this is your style to do every single shadow and try to figure out like do a value study or something, you're doing it. But this is something that I found myself doing a lot and you need to be aware of it. Be careful about uh, having too many shadows. It's our job to find the most important shadows to emphasize and then cut out the rest. This is a very important shadow right here. This is a very important shadow. This one right here because it's differentiating the surface of the arm and the surface of the, the chest area on this jacket. And this shadow right here because it's also describing the form of this little uh, flappy flu right there. Maybe even this one right here because it's describing this form right here and the, uh, the arm. So it's our job to pick out the shadows that are most important. Not every single one needs to be to be done. Okay, and for the most part, you wanna do shadows like I talk about everything else in design. You need a big, medium, and small. You can have one major shadow shape, and then you've got some, maybe two mediums, and then a few small ones sprinkled in there. All right, go, uh, go watch my videos about big, medium, and small. That's what I got right there, baby. All right, these are the last few three. We're just gonna go over these real fast. Got a very clean, specific, uh, distinct, Shadow shape there, looking good. Moving on. All right, this one's looking pretty good. The only one big thing that I see wrong with this one, you got a big shadow on your face here, so you wanna make sure you do that as well, right there. All right, good to go. And the final one, I think you did a really good job with this one, even though they're really difficult to do, is to get these shadow shapes down from a light that's coming from underneath. Again, for learning, maybe you wanna take the brush size down a little bit, kind of force yourself to make these decisions of, of which way the chin goes. All right, that's pretty much it. Boom! All right, I've gotta have an excuse to put this dude in the thumbnail, so. All right, really, really cool design from uh, J. Kim. This is another situation where the line quality is kind of more loose. Sometimes it kind of looks a little bit scribbly, but we can still tell what's going on in here. Clarity is the point of all of this, and J. Kim gets it done. Even to a point where J. doesn't even use line right here necessarily. It's just insinuated. Very clear outline of the shape of the hair up here. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Boom! The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Boom! 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 All right, I want to do another drawing challenge. These drawing challenges, they take a long time to do, but it's worth it. I'm gonna get to that in a really quick second. I just wanted to read this comment from my uh, second to last video. Very funny. Here's a comment that I posted to the top. Wow, this is very pathetic. You cannot be an artist if you behave this way. In fact, it makes your art mistakes even more clear to see. You're not an expert, you're not a master. You are a pathetic loser who prides himself off of being mean. I think your art is terrible, in fact. No style. DreamWorks? You're really gonna brag about working at DreamWorks? Oh, you are a bitter boomer. You are not an artist. It's so disgusting that you exist. Nothing you make is art, nothing. 
Also, PP face, if you didn't know, art is subjective and has style. I can't believe you have ugly art, ugly heart, and personality. And an ugly face. <laughs> you are not welcome in my art community. Honestly, you should seek therapy. Delete your YouTube and make things for you. Art is about sharing your work and loving it and hoping others will love it. But of course, there's ugly people like you who click bait and roast for views so you can think so highly of yourself. <laughs> but deep down, you are a sad little man. Have fun at DreamWorks. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That is by far one of my favorite, most favorite comments. This already has 81 replies to it. I don't want anybody to go in and hate on these type of people that do these posts. For one, they could be satire themselves, but also I want people to feel open and free to do these type of comments, especially if they're serious. It's just fun. It's just good fun. And it cracks me up. Anger and hatred begets more anger and hatred. Okay, so, uh, but it's still fun to point them out. It's just good fun. It's just good fun. All right, to the drawing challenge, what I want you guys to do is take a reference shot just like we're always doing all right hashtag reference challenge so for this reference challenge though i want you to take an action shot or a dramatic shot or acting shot or whatever you want to do but do it with a friend do it with a family member you can do it with your dog do it with your next door neighbor or a stranger on the street me personally i fill that space in my reference shots i act as two people but sometimes especially when you're first starting out you need two people interacting with each other to see the clarity to see how different masses interact with each other. And it's very, very important to do this. A lot of my beginning reference shots in this type of stuff, they were done with other people, especially my type of work, which was like action shots. So it's a lot of contact, a lot of grapples, a lot of, you know, holding people into different positions. And I needed to see how mass works in that space. Very important to see how mass actually works as opposed to trying to figure out how it works out of thin air. Again, you wanna wear shirts that are, you know, short sleeved or whatever, or pants that are a little bit more clear in design so you can see the hips. Make sure you see those hips. Make sure you see the shoulders. Very big, very big deal. If you watch my other videos, you can hear me talking about the lenses and type of stuff that you use and from the cameras. A lot of the cell phones that we use, the, they kind of compress everything to where you don't get foreshortening and that type of thing. And I just wanna point out, Okay, I got this here, new iPhone 11, the thing with the three cameras. You do not need this to take good reference shots. Do not think for a second that I'm telling you that this will make you a better artist because it won't. But if you were to have one, there's a setting down here that's 0.5. All right, now I'm gonna show you the difference here. Here's the regular lens. Okay, this is me holding up the regular lens. This is what you guys are shooting uh, sh foreshortening things at, uh, maybe. But now let's go 0.5. Now look at it, boom, boom. Again, you don't need a phone to create foreshortened images or for reference even, but I just want to show you the different types of lenses and how it can change how you perceive, how it changes shots. All right, maybe I'll do a video over it later, but I'm just trying to show you the differentiation of this. All right, let's see it again. Got the regular one. This is a standard cell phone. Bam, foreshortened. Pretty bananas, huh? Can even bring it down here. Bring it all the way up. All right, mainly I just wanted to show you that so you can have a differentiation. You know there's a difference in types of lenses and how they compress and how foreshortening works. All right, lastly, I want to say I'm almost at 200K. That's pretty darn impressive. You guys are blasting it. All right, we're getting learned. We're getting turned. And we're, we're, we're growing. I welcome all of you to uh, join the reference challenge. All right, so if you like this video, if you like this content, <laughs> all right, for... Uh, editing you can just cut out uh, after I've obviously stopped talking maybe even up to this point you can just let it play out but uh, yeah maybe something a little bit different something a little new